through the election. We understand that it's more, we understand that it's more than a color issue. It's more than what color, what gender our candidates happen to be. And we know that a color line still exists. Well, let me tell you how we know and how I know personally. I had the opportunity, I was blessed with the opportunity to engage in a forum with student leaders, student leaders that were being supported by a fellowship. And within this program, this beautiful program, we still engage in a discussion based on the question, does the color line still exist? Does racism still exist? And these are people, these are young students who are mobilizing around a certain candidate. Okay? So the fact that we know that this still is a question within those who are mobilizing the candidate tells us something very particular. Again, it tells us that we cannot just vote because of the color of someone's skin. We have to keep in mind the issues that are permeating our community. We have to keep in mind Iraq. We have to, have to keep in mind the criminal justice system. We have to keep in mind health care. We have to keep in mind jobs. We are entering, most of us who are graduating, if all of us want to enter into this job market. We want to enter into a United States that is based on equality and democracy. So let's, let's demonstrate that. Let's demonstrate that and let's hold our elected officials responsible. Also, for those who are here, for those educators, for those students, in order to galvanize and in order to and in order for us to all understand that the issue of the color line still exists, we have to teach all of history, not just some aspects of history. In our historically black colleges and other colleges, but for those youth who are conscious, for those youth who are fully engaged and understand the issue, understand that global warming is an issue and we know that the playing field is unequal, so when that can